Right lads, I'm your host, Amanda this Kebab, and today we'll be looking at a cesspool that is GTA Online. GTA Online has been one of the most popular games on the planet for nearly a decade, pulling in millions of players a month and being one of the most watched games on both YouTube and Twitch. However, over the past five years, the experience of playing this game has slowly been declining, becoming more geared towards players who are willing to spend real life money on share cards and more hostile to newer players, with mods like 5M now pulling in more players than the actual game itself on PC. However, with all of that, I still present a question. Is GTA Online still worth playing in 2022? Well, today I'm gonna do my damnedest to best answer that question. I don't know if any of that made any sense. GTA Online is very much an oddity in gaming. On the surface, it's a simple open world game with its own economy that's either fueled by in-game activity or outside purchases through share cards. However, GTA Online is no standard open world game and the sheer amount of crap you can do in it nowadays is somewhat overwhelming to newer players. When I started playing GTA Online back in 2017, there wasn't a huge amount to work towards. Essentially, it was gather up enough money to afford an apartment before starting heists, and then work up enough money to buy a garage of fancy cars. Nowadays, there are so many more ways to make money, whether that be passive income from nightclubs, bunkers, or those biker business production thingies, to active income like import export or the KO Perico heist. There is now a lot more to do in GTA Online. However, I do think it's important to draw a distinction between having a lot of stuff and said stuff actually being fun. As I mentioned before, GTA Online essentially has its own economy, with everything you do in game giving you cash to purchase more businesses, vehicles, and weapons. The last two I'll go into detail on later. Many of these activities are fun. Heists especially are the key reason many people have flocked to this game over the years, thanks to the fun they offer to the player when playing in a group. Other missions like jobs from Martin Madrazo or Lamar can offer fun experiences to the player alongside adversary modes, so there isn't exactly a shortage of things to do. Here's the problem with all that. It soon becomes apparent to you as the player that not all of these modes are equal. Many missions slash activities offer a lot more cash to the player than others, meaning you are presented with a few choices. Play for fun and basically be broke, grind the same few modes over and over to maximize profit, or buy share cards to do what you want. The problem is, for years, Rockstar has been making it harder and harder for the everyday player to earn money in-game, and increasing the prices of everything with every DLC released, forcing people to either grind, or pay them money, with this problem becoming especially apparent when you move into the game's free mode. GTA Online's free mode has warped over the years from a fun place to mess around with friends, driving up Mount Chiliad and performing air shows, to an active fucking war zone. It all started back in 2015 with the introduction of the Hydra in the Heists update. Before Hydras, the most dangerous thing in free mode was either the Rhino Tank, Buzzard, or laser, none of which were particularly easy to obtain at the time, and the laser, although overpowered in the hands of a good pilot, was hard to get back if you were shot down or crashed. The Hydra changed everything, and essentially gave any player with enough money and skill the power to dominate a lobby, and was only really countered with the introduction of the homing launcher and explosive sniper rifle, returning free mode to a relative state of balance, until the Doomsday and Nightclub updates, which would introduce the two most game-ruining OP additions to any game ever. The Oppressor Mark II and Orbital Cannon. The Oppressor Mark II, which for any of you lucky enough to not know what it is, was essentially a flying bike armed with homing missiles that you could spawn anywhere at any time and wreck havoc by simply pressing the A button. I say was because it was slightly nerfed. And the Orbital Cannon was essentially a kill switch that for 750 grand let you kill anybody on the map, which granted was pretty pricey, but not when you mixed it with a glitch that essentially let you do it for free. These two started the revolution of expensive, overpowered items that would allow anybody willing to spend the millions of in-game and subsequent hundreds of real life dollars required to buy them allowed them to have the immediate advantage over any player who didn't have the money and although it has calmed down recently it's not uncommon to see a level 15 flying around one of these things blowing up idiots like me who instead prefer to spend all our money on fancy cars and planes this whole push to a more combat oriented free mode often alienates a lot of players who simply want to play for fun and not for their KD, and makes them choose between either joining in on the fight or roam around constantly in fear of being blown up by a flying Carrera. Now I've just ran through a lot of negatives, but is there any positives? 
well, of course there is, otherwise there wouldn't be a point to making this video. The influx of content may be largely pushing you towards buying shark cards, but there still is a lot of cool vehicles and weapons you can mess around with. Some of my personal favourites being the Microlite, Seabreeze, and Up and Atomizer. As well as that, you aren't exactly forced to fight against other players, and in fact, I personally prefer to troll other players, using things like the RC tank to annoy tryhards, and all in all, just doing stupid things like pimping out my Volkswagen Beetle. Heists are also as fun as ever, even if they can't take hours to complete when playing with absolute idiots. And the plethora of other modes still give most people enough reason to log on at least every now and then. However, the main reason of course this game is still kicking on is because it's such a lucrative cash cow for Rockstar. And it is abundantly clear that they're more interested in adding content for the sake of adding content than actually trying to further the game, which is why a lot of players are moving to things like 5M. Now I would say myself included, but my computer isn't strong enough to run it, and I'm just a simple college student that doesn't exactly have the money to spend on a PC just to drive around acting like Paul Blart. Yeah, I think, I, I think Police Academy or Bad Boys would have been a better reference, but... So my final verdict, is GTA Online still worth playing in 2022? Yes, but don't expect the usual gaming experience. Anyway, lads, that's all I have for you today. Uh, comment if I missed anything below. Uh, I probably did. I wrote this script at about 2 o'clock in the morning. But with all that said, I'll see you guys next time.